One of the more common questions I receive is, how did you put that texture in that illustration? Well, today I'm going to show one of the simple methods that I use, uh, one of many, um, one that's easy to apply and, and um, that hopefully you can find useful in, you, in your own work. Um, I'm basically just going to show some general principles and, and guidelines, and hopefully you can use that and apply it to your own situation, create your own textures uh, with your own illustrations. In fact, I've got a texture here on this cover slide, so I'm turning that off just so you can see how it looks without the texture applied. This is the type of t overlay texture layer that we'll, I'll be showing you how to create. Um, to show how it works, I'm going to have a gradient here, as I often do, just to show how the texture will apply to a range of values. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer here, and then I'm going to fill that layer. Um, ah, missed it. I'm going to fill that layer with 50% uh, 50 50 gray. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if I go over here to the layers palette and then change the mode to overlay, you can see there's absolutely no effect. So 50% gray in the overlay mode um, well, has no effect on, on the artwork below it. Uh, and that actually is going to come in handy, and you'll see why, hopefully, momentarily. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a, um, a bit of grain uh, just using the noise filter. Um, so let's go in there to uh, add noise, maybe increase that to like 40, just so you can really see what's going on. And then I'm going to change this to monochromatic, actually and hit OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit um, over, change this over to overlay. Now you can see how this applies to the artwork below. So where you can especially notice it is in this middle area here where the, where the values are closer to midtones. As soon as you get over here to the whites, it disappears and is the same as you get over here to the blacks. So, so really the, this, the, that, um, that might be one of the shortcomings of, of this particular method is that uh, really it only applies to uh, anything outside of your solid blacks and solid whites, but really anything in between those values, even over here in the darker uh, grays, it actually does show up a little bit. So, um, so I want to show you some other ways this can be useful. So let's, let's keep this, uh, this same layer that I've already created. And now I'm going to go up here to filter. Uh, all right, let's go up to filter gallery. And then I want to create some kind of more clumpy uh, texture here. So I'm going to go over here to grain. I haven't done this in years, so hopefully I can remember how to do it. Um, change this grain type to clumped so we get a little bit larger. I'm going to change the contrast, increase that a little bit. Um, maybe the intensity, see what that does. Okay, I'm not totally sure what I'm doing here, so let's hit OK. And now what I want to do is show you how you can use a feature that you probably haven't used in a long time, if you ever have. This thing has been around since I started using Photoshop, which was back when I was in high school. Uh, so, gosh, I don't know, version 3 or 4, something like that. So I'm going to go down here to Stylize and emboss. Whoever thought that would be useful again, huh? Hit OK. So what that does is, if I zoom in here, you basically have a 50% gray base color, and that 50% gray, as we know, is not going to affect the artwork below it. Anything that's lighter than the gray is going to lighten the artwork below it, and anything that's darker is going to darken the artwork below it. So you should be able to apply this to the artwork below to create a little bit of now kind of embossed texture, sort of almost like a, a painted wall texture or something. So let's change that to overlay, and you can see how that applies. So kind of a, kind of a nice effect. Um, so how does this really apply to some actual artwork? Well, let's, I'll just show you uh, a little sample here. This may not be the best application, but it's just sort of a quick um, idea of how this could work. So. So here's some vector art that I created quite a few years ago. Um, now I'm going to grab this texture that I just made, in fact, and pull this over here. 
and drop it on top of the uh, and you can see you can see how that applies um, to the uh, Frankenstein's bride here so um, sometimes I'll add a little bit of texture to my vector artwork when I'm when I'm showing it uh, for example in my portfolio or something um, not not that that's always necessarily the best idea it's just sort of my uh, style I suppose sometimes it kind of softens the just hard computer um, sm perfectly smooth uh, look of, of vector artwork so I've created this uh, texture already ahead of time to sort of mimic a, a little bit of a paper kind of mottled grain um, that just sort of flattens and kind of set back, sets back the, uh, the vector artwork. I've got another one in here that I can apply this to as well. So hopefully that gives you the idea of how this works. Uh, again, just to recap, the basic idea of these uh, overlay textures is to use the dark and light values of your um, texture that you've created to uh, lighten and darken the, uh, the artwork below it. Um, there are some limitations, as I've noted. Uh, for example, it does not apply to your blackest blacks. And as you can see, it takes a while before you finally start seeing that take effect. Or to your whitest whites. And the same thing here is further, further you get over, the more you begin to see it. So that is one of your limitations of this particular texture method. But if you're using flat vector artwork, oftentimes this can be a, a good solution. And for example, with something like this artwork, you can always lighten your, um, your blacks, as I've already done here, but I'll do it again uh, just a little bit. Here I'm using selective color, which is down here in your adjustment layers. And then I'll take this black slider, pull it back a bit. As you see, you can come as far as you want there. But if I just lighten them just a hair, that allows in just enough texture to, to see what's going on.